Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Better Little Never. <laughs> Yes. I'm not actually inside a women's prison at the moment. The horniest just went up to like 11. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Bonus episode. Bonus episode. Bonus episode. Bonus episode. Let's cut the intro. Whoops. Let's cut the intro, shall we? Let's just quiet it down and let's get to it. Yesterday, I did a regularly scheduled program, and then I told you I had to leave because I was running. I was running out of time before I had to go to the Oilers game. And holy cow! I'm not gonna lie to you. I was down a little bit. Oilers were in a hole. Two zero Dallas Stars after five minutes and twenty nine seconds. And then what happened? Then what happened? I. I really kind of want to go through a couple of things on Instagram because I love Oilers fans so much, but at some point we need to act like not everything is the worst thing of all time. Does that make sense? I feel like it does because yesterday I do what I always do when I go to a game and I just posted a picture that we were there. I posted a picture that we were there and I just said, we are back. And if you follow the nation for any length of time, Coombsy said that a lot, and we've just kind of adopted as a thing. We are back. And <laughs> some of these are so funny. Like, after the after the second goal went in, we've got Tyler saying, our season is over. I can't believe we're going out like this. Good job, Skinner. Bro, Skinner. Moments before disaster. Nurse and Skinner tanking the series. Um, I'm not reading everybody. 2-0. Are we, though? Let's go. Are you kidding me? What did I say? Skinner's a fucking problem. Is Nurse ever going to learn to playing neutral zone? Doesn't work. Nurse and Skinner are honorary stars. Skinner can't catch a cold. They should take Nurse out instead of DJ. No, we ain't. Or we've disappeared. Dallas is toying with us now. Season in the garbage. We are not back. What was that seven deflection we still suck nurse single-handedly costing us the playoffs skinner the most unreliable goalie nurse better score a fucking hat trick all these people in the comments calling themselves fans yikes that one from jordan made me laugh because there were so many other ones liam we're so fucked om two fucking plays by nurse five minutes in and we're out skinner out of there get him out of the net nurse scored on our own net two goals on three shots skinner is a sieve nurse skinner cc for soros mcdavid looks hurt or he doesn't care skinner is shit mcdavid is terrible those are all on the photo that i posted right when the game started 20 seconds into the game, I posted that photo. And those were the comments that came in shortly after. And I went in after the game and I said, how many of you have takes that aged poorly? Listen, I was down and out too. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie, but do you want to know what I tweeted? This is how I approach the situation like that. I just want to know the difference in approach because let's not pretend that the Stanley cup is an easy trophy to win. This isn't going into fucking CDI college. And getting an honorary degree. Does that mean? If you went to CDI college, I don't mean that in a bad way. But like, you know, ultimately, yeah, I kind of mean it. So the way I looked at it was first goal went in. I tweeted, not ideal. Second goal went in. I tweeted, I am dot, 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 unhappy. Third tweet after the moment. And I said, nurse's ass giveth. Nurse's ass Take it away. Because, of course, you remember in, gray, in game three, he stopped a shot with his butt. So I just think it's kind of fun to hold some receipts here of some people who were melting down with there were still 55 minutes left. And for all of those people, where were the tweets going? Oh, I fucked up. Whoop. Those never come, do they? Those never come. Either way, Tyler and I went to the game together, had a fantastic time. We enjoyed ourselves. We laughed. We counted how many times Oilers were kicked out of the face-off circle relative to the Dallas Stars. The answer was six to one. Oilers got kicked out six times. The Stars got kicked out once. What is that about? I don't know. You could hear people audibly yelling at the linesman. No one's here to see you. I always think that's funny because it's true. It's true. But the reason we are here today 
is to get through your voicemails. And I got about 30 of them to get through. And some of these are old and some of these are out of order. So if you left a bunch of parts in a message and well, we're going to see if they go in order. And if they don't go in order, I'm probably going to skip through it and we'll see what happens. This software can be so good for me. It has been a staple on Better Late Than Ever since I started this podcast. And it can also be a piece of shit when I don't know what the fuck's going on. Sometimes it puts everything in order. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't put your name in. Sometimes it does. So we got a mixed bag here today, people. We've got a mixed bag. And over the last week or so, hey, hey buddy, get on the Frank mic. Hey, go over there. Hey, turn around. Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to get him. One of these days, I'm going to get him. One of these days. One of these days, I'm going to get him. But not today. Not today. Let's get to the voicemail. The voice available brought to you by nationgear.ca. Go get yourself some new threads. Look as sexy as I do right now. Wearing a uh, Edmonton Oil Up t-shirt. Looks good. Feel good. If you listen to real life today, I was wearing a, a blue Orlando Magic Shack jersey. And Chalmers made fun of me, so I changed my shirt. It's rude. Thankfully, nationgear.ca never gets made fun of by Chalmers. I'm very sensitive. I'm very sensitive about my clothing. I thought I had style today, and then Chalmers laughed at me. Chalmers is a dick. I thought you looked great. I thought you looked great, too. Sometimes you send me selfies in the morning of your outfit of the day, and I always give it an A-OK from Lil Quads. None of that happens. I don't do that. Yes, you do. <laughs> Blue your secret. I don't actually do that. Yes, you do. I don't actually do that. All right, first voicemail comes in from Donkey Volley. This one came in God knows when. We'll see if it's actually in the right order. Yeah, well, that was an absolute cock show. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> still, Dallas, I, I don't like Dallas. I don't like them because we have history. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I was a kid who didn't know. It's like, <laughs> No. <laughs> right, get them. Fuck them up. Yes. Roar, roar, Kraken. Yes. Hello. <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to sound silly now when we get beat 3 1. No one else. I'm not going to get beat 3. Oh, someone texted me. Fuck it. 3 1 Oilers. I'm calling it 3 1. Yes. Come on. Good afternoon. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> 3 1 Oilers. I wonder what day that was on. <clears throat> was that ahead of game three? Because if it was ahead of game three, well, ah, things didn't go our way, did they? No, sir. No, sir. So, that apparently came in on the 25th. So, say at the software, the 25th, that was uh that was game two unfortunately did it was 3-1 dallas so you did the reverse jinx donkey the reverse jinx i don't blame you i don't blame you i never would oh thank you. um yeah um i think i've deleted um better late than never ding ding do, do, do. yeah my um <laughs> sexy fucking good afternoon mm. Uh, by the way, this is before the game two. Ah, once again, out of order. Now I understand. So let me see retroactively if the first voicemail will make more sense now that I've heard the second one before the first, or I guess the first one after the second one. Dallas, this is ever nice. I want to um, say the word sex. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say the word sex. Please, <laughs> God. It? Let me, after this game, dial in and let me say the word sex. Ooh. Hello. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the dog here. Good afternoon. Mm. I think I'm rubbish. Good luck. It's like, 
Please, Lord, let me get laid this year. I've been a very good sat satanic overlord, and if you could just bestow upon me a woman who would touch my giggle button, that would be very, very wonderful. Thank you. Next voicemail comes up from Blowfish. Blowfish. He's been relatively new, Blowfish. I like him, though. What do you got to say, sir? ABM, it's the Blowfish. Hello. Here you're stuck in Nashville. I was. Damn. Never been there myself, but hope you get back in time for the game. If you heard me yesterday, I did a, probably the longest RSB that I've ever done. Probably. I think, anyway. Uh... And like I said yesterday, it was stuck in Nashville, and then we got excited, though. Oh, maybe we can go for a night out. And then it's just like, nope, can't leave the airport because your bags don't come out. Anyway, if you want to hear me complain about that, first world problems, admittedly. Go back and listen to yesterday's episode. I missed last night's game. I was working security for a big gala. It was fun, kicking some drunks out. Big gala, eh? Hmm. What do you do, Blowfish? I mean, work security for galas, apparently, but like, what kind of gala? Was it a fancy one? Why were the drunks getting kicked out? What was the gala for? I've got so many questions. Good times. Um, catching up on Oilers news today. And uh, yeah, Peter DeBoer's comments are interesting. Apparently, Edmonton away game, like Dallas is away game, it's going to be no different than Colorado or Vegas. Man, I know this podcast is going to come out after the game, but I hope. I really hope that the fans make Peter DeBoer go looking for earplugs or Tylenol or something because we do it so much better than Nashville does. I even rewatched the game. Yes, they were louder this time than, the, than game one, but man, our fans are so much better. Anyway, go Oilers. Hope you're back in time. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to seeing uh, what happened. So game, two, uh, I guess game three, the first one back, I didn't, I did get home in time. I like, I walked in my house probably 30 minutes before puck drop. I did a quick episode of Frank's picks. I, I took a shower cause you know, you travel for 14, 15 hours. You just stink like shit. You smell like other people's recycled air, all that shit. Um, <clears throat> but Roger's place was great. I, I mean, I wasn't there. So I'll talk about last night's experience because I was like, the game last night. When the Oilers went down to nothing, the place got very quiet. I mean, that's no surprise, right? Like, they get very quiet when you're down by two goals in the first five minutes. People are kind of shell shocked. The teams on the ice were shell shocked. We all were. So. It was quiet, but then when Ryan McLeod scored and then when Bouchard tied it up, from there onward, the place was on fire. It was absolutely electric in there. I've been very, very fortunate this year. Very fortunate to go to a lot of games. I've been to a lot of games this year at Rogers Place. That was, without question, the loudest it's been in there when I've been in there. I've missed... Uh, I think I'm like I missed two or three games at Rogers Place throughout the course of the playoffs so far. Last night was without a doubt the loudest it's ever been. Huge, huge thank you to Trilogy Oilfield Rentals for hooking me up with the tickets. I'm always incredibly grateful. Um, me and Tyler, like I said, had a blast. So thank you to Trilogy Oilfield Rentals for making it happen. Nick, you're up. Okay, Big Milk. I want to both take five of this right now. Because I keep fumble fucking my words, like the Oilers keep fumble fucking the puck. So let's do this. Oilers drop game three. The Edmonton Oilers could easily be up three nothing in the series right now. Instead, we're chasing. We're let me see here. Is this the Nick that usually comments? Because I'm hearing a gentleman with hope in his voice. Even after losing game three, I'm hearing a gentleman who is uh, not shitting on everyone. Do we have personal growth? Has Nick changed his stripes? Let's find out. Down to one, thanks to shooting ourselves in the fucking foot. Self-inflicted wounds are killing us this series. You oh, totally agree. Like, it's one of those things where they're blowing off toes. If you've ever heard the story of my boy Waz, he's got nine toes. Not ten, nine. And I feel like the Oilers at some points in this season have kind of been along those lines where they're just blowing off toes one at a time. That's not what happened to Waz. That's not what I'm saying. That is not what happened to Waz. I repeat, Waz's toe was not lost due to him shooting it off. However, he still has nine toes. Back to you, Nick. Motherfucker. 
How the hell did we let Jason Robertson score a hat trick when he was a complete ghost? Jason Robertson is a hell of a player. Do you know what else, Big Milk? He looks like the baby from Ice Age. I don't know if you're too old to know the movie Ice Age. How fucking dare you? He looks just like the Ice Age baby. How the hell did we let that guy score a hat trick? And I know momentum changes in game, but how? How the hell could we look like the 1984 Oilers and then in the second period look like the 2023 Chicago Blackhawks? What the fuck is happening? Yeah, I, that's where I agree with you. It's one of those ones where the Oilers just shot themselves in the foot and it was absolutely, it, it was painful to watch. There's no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Uh, next up, we've got Chris Walkling. Hey, Bag Milk, this is Chris, and I'm currently watching the Oilers game, but I have a righteous sack beating for you. So if you want to play the music. Oh, hang on. Hang on. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. Again, shout out to Trilogy Allfield Rentals for hooking me up with tickets for game four. Um, there is a fucking fly in my apartment and it's distracting me because all I want to do is kill it <laughs> and it won't calm down. So it keeps flying in my way and I have to cover my beer so that it doesn't land in my beer and I drink fly germs. And in the past like three weeks, I feel like I've killed like... 15 flies that's an exaggeration but one night i did kill like seven in my apartment and i swear i don't live in like squalor it's clean in here it's just we have a big explosion but like good fucking grief nature like take a chill pill like fucking calm down with the flies so yeah it's my righteous sack being just too many damn flies over the place anyways go oilers uh yeah fuck them flies according to google a housefly is average lifespan of 28 days. 28 days is the average lifespan for your just run-of-the-mill housefly. There, we're learning something again on Better Late Than Never. Oh, Chris Walkling again. Here we go. Bad milk. There's another fucking fly in here. No one want to be distracted in the fucking second period. Though they did show a replay of Nurse's dummy thick ass blocking a shot. So, you know, maybe that wouldn't have happened if there was a fly in here. I don't know. But uh, come next commercial break, I'm going to go kill it because it's going to bug the shit out of me. Go Oilers! Does anybody think that guy is living in some kind of hoarder house? Listen, Satan's got flies everywhere, but that's because I bathe in garbage. I open up the bags that I steal from outside of your house in those green bins, and then I rub it all over my body. I accept the flies into my orbit. I accept them into my environment because they're my friends. And I love the way that their little feet feel when they're walking on my belly button. It's just such a glorious time to be alive. Just before the start of the second period, I got the fucking fly that was bothering me. I think that's good luck for the game to come now that we're up 2-0. Let's get it. Ah, it's going to be a good game. Well, um, maybe you should have let the fly live. I mean, I get to say this with the benefit of hindsight, you know? These voicemails are now a couple of days old. They're a handful of days old. Chris Walkling, he's out here killing flies. As we know, they've got a 28-day life cycle. So saith Google. I mean, Google would be lying to me, to be honest. How long do house lives live for? Where do flies lay their eggs in the house? House flies typically lay eggs on animal feces and garbage. White legless maggots, the larvae stage, hatch from the eggs and grow to about a half inch. When fully grown, maggots crawl away from their food source and undergo the pupil stage. Pupil? Anyway, we're learning about flies here. Chris, Chris, Chris Walklin again. I assume that there's more fly talk here. So bagged milk. Okay, so oh, the Dallas Stars score, not cool, but... Not only was there one fly in my apartment, there was another fly. So there was two flies flying around, but I got both of them after the star scored. So my apartment, knock on wood, is fly free, which hopefully will invigorate the Oilers to win. That's what I'm going to delude myself with. Let's go. Oilers are going to win. Flies are going to stay out of my house, hopefully. 
listen, if any of those statements are going to be true, it's going to be the Oilers winning, not fly staying out of my house. Anyways, let's go. Well, we got one more vet voicemail from Chris Walkling coming up here, and uh, I'm going to guess how it went. So, hi, PM. It's Chris. Uh, the Oilers just lost five to three. <laughs> I should have let the flies live because if the flies would have lived, maybe then the Oilers would have won. So, you know what? I'll take a portion of this L. <laughs> Hello, it's me, the fly in Chris Walkley's apartment. I sound like a shitty robot. That's why Bag Milk never uses this filter. However, I have been flying around Chris Walkley's apartment trying to get a look at the goods, trying to get a sweet, sweet taste of that beer he left unattended. I've been flying around. I have been in his beer. He doesn't know it, but he drank it anyway. There you go. We heard from the fly. Now, uh, we got Nick coming up. I'm guessing this is going to be right after game three. So I imagine our boy Nick is not going to be very happy. All right, big milk, spicy Nick back here again. I got more to say about game three. <laughs> it, again, like I know these are a little bit old and whatever, and that's what kind of makes it fun to me because now I know the outcome of obviously game three, and I obviously know the outcome of game four. So... When the Oilers lost game three, I was more annoyed than I was mad because the way they started that game was electric. I'd say that that was probably one of the best periods they've played all playoffs long. I I think that they did everything they needed to to look like a team that is a contender for the Stanley Cup. And then in the second period, in a span of under four minutes, they gave up three goals. Poor Chris Walkling was out here chasing flies. Blaming the flies for all kinds of things. But uh, it's fun for me to do this now because, again, I know the outcome of not only game three, but also how game four went. The Oilers got dominated at the blue lines in that game. I mean, the last two periods, second and third periods, they got dominated by Dallas on the blue lines. Okay, I want you to think back. All three of those Dallas goals, those that second period comeback, every single one of them was inches away from being cleared. Inches. Like those first two. So if you ever, I, I mean, this is probably going to be really redundant. If you listen to Oilers Nation Radio, you've heard me say the phrase, respect the blue lines multiple times, both blue lines, your own and the other one. So Nick here is 100% right. Nugent Hopkins, my boy, my dude. My ambassador of greatness. He had an opportunity on the first one. He just kind of poked it. Just a little poke. And it didn't go over the blue line. Turns around in the net. The second one, I don't remember it now. It was a few days ago. But goes to clear it up. Up Broadway. Hits Jamie Benn. He knocks it down. Puck in the back of the net. I think that was Robertson's first goal. And then the third one, I don't remember who that one was. It might have been DeHarnay. Might have been. But I don't want to blame Vinny if it wasn't him. I just can't remember. But it didn't go out of the blue line. And then there were also times in game two, I guess game three, in the uh, in the second period where the Oilers were really struggling, where they couldn't get it in past the opposing blue line either. They were trying a little dipsy or a little doodle or their break or their chip-ins weren't hard enough or they shot it right at a player. Those were the small details that drive me nuts. So Coach Bagnuck puts on my coaching cap and I always say respect the blue lines. And I'm happy that people are now picking up on it and just kind of embracing that small detail that ends up meaning so, so much. Goals. They were quite literally on the blue line. They were going out in a millisecond. And Dallas made a fantastic keep. And guess what? They scored. And then that third goal was that Jamie Ben bullshit shin pad. It was going out and then he blocked it. I don't know what the hell. The point being, all three of those goals that were scored by Dallas on the play before they were going out and the stars made a blue line keep. Yep. hundred <laughs> percent. Meanwhile, the Oilers can't even get the fucking puck in the zone half the time because <laughs> Dallas is dominating them at that blue line too. Uh huh. It, it's ridiculous uh -huh. and it's got to change and it's got to change right now because if it doesn't change, there's not going to be a series to come back to. <laughs> I'm very emotional and I'm feeling spicy because we should be up three right nothing right now in this series. We could be up three nothing. And instead we're chasing and it pisses me off. Come on. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't disagree. 
I really don't. I love when the Oilers execute their details. And in game three, they did not. Not nearly enough, anyway. There was a what, let's say. Oh, hey, buddy, go on mic. Hey, right there. Go on the microphone. Oh, we've got a toy. Um, I, I think that it's one of those ones where you got to cross the T's and dot the I's. And I know that's a, a simple way of looking at it. But at the end of the day, hockey's a pretty simple game, if you think about it. It's a little bit of passy shooty. But to passy shooty, you got to make sure you're passy shooting in the right spots. And the blue lines for me have always been a huge, huge kind of marker about where your details are at. And in game three, they just weren't good enough. Anonymous caller, who be you? Funny enough, actually, speaking of the gym, I ran into a fan of the nation and he mentioned that we (laughs) do a good job of staying in shape while doing all this hockey stuff, he huh. says. He kind of looked at me, you do a good job of kind of keeping yourself together with all the hockey and everything. I'm like, thank you, I try. I mean, personally, I think I can do a bit better, but thank you for the compliment. I, I, I don't like, sometimes the booze <laughs> adds up, the sitting. It does. You do a lot of sitting at the nation, right? So yep. you got to get a little active when you can. So, yeah, that's all I had to say about that right now. So, Waz, I, I'm going to go ahead and say Waz left seven voicemails of the ones that I'm going to get through today. And again, I don't know if they're in order, if they're not in order. But Waz going to the gym, I kind of wish he had a GoPro. I just like to watch him do stuff. I like watching Waz do things. I like that he goes to the gym, though. I should go to the gym. I don't do it. I could do it. My excuses list for not going, very extensive. I do a lot of walking. Me and the dude just got back from a two and a half kilometer walk right before I started recording. Feel good about that. Get my steps in. I'm going to take him for another one at about nine o'clock mountain standard time. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, uh, we tend to do an okay job, I would say, at the nation. You know, some folks, they just kind of have a good metabolism. I'm, I'm hoping you can hear Frank's squeaky toy in the back. He's very excited. He's working out right now. Just had a delightful dinner. I put some uh, some fresh ingredients on top of his kibble just to make it a little little sexier for him. A little fun for the dude today after a big walk. But yeah, I agree for the most part. We're a pretty kind of active bunch overall. A lot of golfers in the group, that's for sure, now that the sun is shining. Well, it's good for you going to the gym, buddy. What do you got next to say? And you know what? Maybe, maybe I'm just going to throw Liam under the bus here because last week on Oilers <laughs> Nation Radio, I believe, he mentioned that. He doesn't know... Or didn't know what the Death Star looked like. And he thought it was just a regular Star Destroyer in Star Wars. And I'm like, for a guy who has a letterbox account, what are you doing? How do you not know what the Death Star looks like <laughs> off heart? I don't care if it's an honest mistake. You, do not say you're a film critic of some sort if you don't know what the Death Star looks like. That was just <laughs> shameful. I'll be honest. I was insulted as a Star Wars fan, as a fan of film. Cinematography? <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Sorry, I have to say that. I just had to get that off my chest. Waz, I hope, like, I send this podcast, the raw files, over to Waz, and he clips them up and makes magic and he puts them out on social and he helps promote the podcast because Waz is fantastic at that. That's one of his superpowers. So, Waz, I hope you take some of your own voicemails and you turn those into clips because I love the out of out of context office wars that we've got going on between Liam and Waz right now. It's very playful. It's almost like a brotherly thing, but I have a really good time laughing about it. Another one from Waz. Why not? Bag milk. Got a bit of a bone to pick with uh, <laughs> someone from Nation HQ. I think it was <laughs> okay. Tyler on Oilers Nation Radio, which is absolutely throwing me under the bus saying how I asked... Liam for computer help that I it was something about oh he's on your IT guy was I never asked Liam for help he offered to help and he couldn't fix the issue you know <laughs> so I understand Liam is not our IT person I know how to handle computers as well I'll be I'll put that out there Dan he tried to help I didn't know what the situation is but we figured it up my laptop is fine but I'm just saying I never asked Liam for help I had to put that out there. <laughs> so essentially what happened was, is was his laptop wouldn't start. And um, if you missed what Tyler said on Oilers Nation Radio, was apparently, allegedly, I wasn't there, was allegedly, in my opinion, this is what I was told, was asked the group if he thought, because his laptop was fucked, he goes, do you think bag milk will approve the expense if I have to get it fixed? And Tyler said, yeah, was, of course he will. 
And it just kind of spiraled from there. So that was on Oilers Nation Radio and was, again, as somebody who makes clips from Oilers Nation Radio, listened to it and uh, there was a little context there. Again, office battles going on. I quite like this. I really, really do. Makes me happy. Makes me happy. We're going to go to another anonymous caller here. And what do you got to say? Hello, BM. So I have a righteous sack beating. Oh, hang on. Hang on, Kyle the Embalmer here. Let's hit the button. Again, shout out to Trilogy Oilfield Rentals. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. All right, let's get to it, Kyle. Um, Look, watching these playoffs, obviously we've heard enough about people complaining about the refs, calls that are missed. Um, The worst one last night, Bouchard took one right in the numbers. Right in the numbers from uh, Jason Robertson. He's too good to be doing that. He doesn't have to do that. Do we have to put stop signs on the back of players' jerseys like you're 10 years old again, Jason Robertson? Why were you doing that? It wasn't called. It was a ridiculous play. Um, Ultimately, the Oilers went and scored immediately after. I'm pretty sure if my memory serves correctly, but that was the only one I really complained about. Uh, Maybe the dry side will butt end, but whatever. It is what it is. Refs are terrible. Mm. Uh, Calls that they're making, soft calls, not calling major calls, whatever it might be, but I want to complain about something else. Um, the fucking linesmen. I have had enough of these fucking linesmen. <laughs> they have two jobs. <laughs> Dropping the puck, uh-huh. calling offside slash icings. And one of the things <laughs> that they aren't fucking doing is dropping the goddamn puck. So it's funny that he's leaving this because, like I said, last night Tyler and I decided to track what the linesmen were doing and how often the Oilers got kicked out, and it ended up being six times for the Oilers and only one from the Stars. I just, I don't know the rules of NHL faceoffs, admittedly, but sometimes they wait forever. So guys are going to move and they're going to twitch, and it's your fault. Again, people, nobody's there to watch you. Back to you, Kyle. For fuck's sakes, why is it that every single face-off, you either need to fake a drop or kick somebody out or both? It's insane. Just drop the goddamn puck. It's not about you. Just drop the fucking thing. It doesn't matter if... uh, I don't even know. I don't even know what the fucking rules are. I don't even know why they did this, like, fake dropping it or delay dropping it, but it seems every goddamn face-off... They, they're kicking somebody out. Just drop the goddamn fucking puck and get play started. That's that's it. I mean, I don't disagree. I really don't disagree. It's like I said, there was a lot of people at Rogers Place last night being like, nobody's here to watch you. If I would have had my micro- megaphone button, I would have been like, drop the puck, bro. <laughs> anyway, the way she goes sometimes. Uh, another anonymous caller. Who be you? Also, while oh, I've got you fuck. on, the- hang on. If your Duke's there, let me see if I can find message twenty one. I think this might be the first one. Dukes, this, if this is again, they're not in order, so I'm hoping this is the first part of the Duke's message. You're not know, bag milk. I've been thinking, which which I know is rare because I am a dumb cunt. But, um, you know, like, okay, picture, picture like, you know, you're at an Oilers game, might sure. be an intermission, whatever. You... Let me let me do the mental exercise. Hang on. I'm going to do this. And what if I press this one over? And I don't have a button for it. What does this do? Oh, that is mislabeled. Well, anyway, I tried Dukes, but I'm imagining me at Roger's place. Do I have a beer in my hand? Probably. Is my Ryan Nugent Hopkins jersey on? Probably. Oh, by the way, so yesterday, again, I was rushed to get to the game by the time I was done editing the podcast and posting and sending the clips off to the boys. So I thought I grabbed my blue and orange Ryan Nugent Hopkins jersey, and I threw it on, and I got in my truck, and I drove to the office. Or not the office. Well, kind of the office, Roger's place. And as I was waiting for Tyler in Ford Hall, and I'm just kind of looking around and posting some pictures on my Instagram and shit like that, Tyler walks up to me and he goes, holy shit, look at that jersey. When did you get that thing? And I look down, and I was wearing a vintage jersey, a vintage blue and orange from, I think I bought it in about 2000 and probably 2005. 
It has got no name on it. It's just a straight blue and orange jersey with the vintage patch on the upper right chest. So Tyler thought it was very funny because I just thought it was my nudes jersey that I always wear. And I threw that on or one of my nudes jerseys. (laughs) Don't mind me. But it was just an uncrested blue and orange beauty that I bought when I was like 20 years old or something like that. So Tyler says, listen, if the Oilers win, you might just have to rock that for the rest of the round. And they did win. And now I don't know what to do. Anyway, back to you, Dukes. You shot Frazier. You're in the urinal, you know, eyes forward. Doing- I like how you say that, urinal. I like that. Yeah, doing what you're there to do so you can fuck off. And someone comes in and farts and you're like, you know, look, if they were going to do that somewhere... It's probably the right place to do it, but you still <laughs> wish you weren't around to experience it. Hang on. There you go. There's a fart sound effects for you, Dukes. Just to enhance the story, if you will. Theater of the mind, they call it, people. Well, that's exactly how I feel about Donkey Volley's voicemails. You know, like... <laughs> Fair, you know, he, he's in the right place to do what he came here to do. But, like, man, I really wish I wasn't around when it fucking happened. Holy <laughs> hell. Anyway, <laughs> game four tomorrow. Don't know what's going to happen. By the time you hear this, you fucking probably won't either because this will come out before the game. Uh, fuck, hope we win. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Anyway, I'll be watching. Play La Bamba, baby. Let's fucking go Oilers. Well, if you missed it, if you haven't listened to Real Life yet, Dukes made an appearance on Real Life today, and Tyler executed the bit perfectly. I had no idea Dukes was going to be there. Wanye didn't know. Chalmers didn't know. And then we were talking about super fans that go to Oilers games, and somehow Dukes' name pops up, and Tyler goes, oh, Dukes, eh? And pressed a button, and there he was. It was beautifully executed. Anyway, part two of the Duke's message. I think I've got these in order properly. Also, while I've got you on the edge of your seat, mm-hmm. um, there's a, I want to give a shout out to someone. Um, well, first off, two people, because fuck you, it's my voicemail. Yep. I want to give a shout out to Danger Suede, because he's just a good cunt, and he's always been a good cunt. And yeah, I don't know. Honestly, he, no, nah, but to be real, he's just an awesome person. Um, anyway. Moving on, the person I actually intended to shout out uh, in this voicemail is a doctor from Edmonton who now fucking lives in Australia, Matty Baker. Do no, that. you want yeah. that? Hang on, all right. Yeah, do that thing. Do that quick. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, cool. Anyway, um, he got a new car recently. Um. And it looks awesome. I'm really happy for him. But he needs a fucking Oilers Nation decal for the back. So, I don't know. Going to have to reach out on the socials and, and get him get him one sent, send one his way to his direction so it can be on his car. Um, yeah, I don't know. Game still hasn't started because it's only like five minutes since I sent the last voicemail. So, there's still like, <laughs> fuck. Quick maths, 18 hours to go. So, I don't know. Dukes, uh, DM me. We'll see if we can't figure something out. I'll, like, Yeah, DM me and I'll, I'll see if I can help. I, I don't know how I'm going to help. I don't have anything to do with the Nation Gear store anymore, but let me see if I can do something for you, buddy. Um, love to get that car a decal or a decal. I like I like decal better. I think that's how they say it in the states too. If I'm not mistaken, we say decal. It's not as fun, generally. Uh, I think I got another one here from Waz. Bag milk. I swear to God, going to the gym after eight o'clock, seven o'clock on a weekday is hell. Trying to get a machine of some sort, uh, specifically the pectoral <laughs> fly. I go to the Meadows Rec Center. And there's only two in the entire gym, and my God, it's like as soon as somebody leaves the machine, it's like. All eyes lock on that machine, first come, first serve. It is hell. And it's like, t- tonight I was at the gym for maybe an hour and a half, mostly just trying to wait and see if I can get my hands on this machine. Did not did not happen. I had to adjust the workout plan. And that's what happens when you go uh, at this hour, 8 p.m., 7 p.m., 6 p.m. It is a free-for-all. It is, uh, it's a zoo, to say the least. So, 
yeah, not fun, but we we still got to work at it. And, and that's what that's all that matters, right? That is what matters, Waz. Maybe you might consider getting up at like three, four in the morning. Whatever the earliest is that you can possibly get to the gym, that's when you show up. That's when you go do your thing. And then the machines will always be open. You know, Rick. You know Rick quite well at this point, Waz. Do you know what time he goes to the he goes to the gym? That motherfucker's up at like 6 30 going to the gym and there is no one there. Ask Rick about it. No excuses, Waz. No excuses. Uh, another anonymous voice mailer. Who be you? So uh, last week you let us know that you have kind of a secondary job slash hustle. I do. Um, I'm pretty curious to know what the nature of that is. I don't need to know where you work, but it'd be cool to know uh, what like what type of stuff you're doing. Um, I thought maybe I could entice you by sharing my two side hustles, a sure. two for one deal. Sure. Pretty good deal. I'd like to know um, what you're up to. First one, my family owns a furniture store. Uh, my grandpa started it in 1952. You can figure it out if you look. Um, actually, our original sign is in the sign museum thing. Uh, across from Rogers there by Mercer's. Um, so, I, yeah, I learned how to fix furniture, and <laughs> nobody knows how to fix furniture, apparently, because, uh, yeah, I, it's a pretty good racket. I do it on, yeah, it's Kijiji and stuff. Um, and then secondly, and this is, I'm actually working at making my full-time job, um, I started building guitars at the beginning of COVID. Uh, are we talking about Canadian Furniture Admiral Appliances? Is that the correct sign that I'm looking at? Uh, the sign is a reminder of a vibrant commercial activity that grew in the city from the 1950s and beyond. Uh, Canadian Furniture Store. I'm not going to say the name of the uh, of your grandpa there. Um, Canadian Furniture Store, Canadian Furniture Company, and Canadian Furniture Exchange. Look how fast I am. And by the way, this next one, building guitars, I want to back it up a little bit because I was looking up the sign. I'm going to back it up to about here. I've always wanted to, Chad, maybe reach out to me somewhere. I've always wanted to build a guitar. Uh, I've probably talked about this a handful of times. I've got instruments laying all over my house. Like, can you hear this if I do this? Like there's a guitar literally right at my desk where I'm sitting. So I've always kind of wanted to just buy a guitar kit. I don't know how to do anything, really. My skills in terms of physical world are very limited. On the internet, I've got a range of skills that is wide. But in the physical world, I'm kind of useless. So I want to follow this through. Maybe reach out to me. I'm curious how you got into it. Secondly, and this is, I'm actually working at making my full-time job. Um, I started building guitars at the beginning of COVID. And it so like cool. immediately took over my life. Um, and yeah, I put my balls on the table. I sold my beloved Jeep and I bought a CNC machine. If you know what that is, no, I taught myself, uh, 3d modeling, CAD cam, that kind of thing. And yeah, I like literally build guitars, electric guitars from start to finish out of all sorts of crazy woods from all over the world. I love it. Sick. Um, so maybe that was enough to entice you to let us know what's going on. What do you do, man? Yeah, I've got a few side hustles as well. Um, no surprise on some of them. Some of you probably already know. Like all the all the uh, all the social media for Oodle Noodle, I manage all that. So if you see the memes between Wanya and I, we make the two of us. We make one hundred percent of those. I answer I answer customer service questions. I do a lot of that for Oodle Noodle. Obviously, Jay and Wanya own the Oodle Noodle franchise company. So when they kind of got involved in that and i'm trying to think of the year i just i have no idea to be honest what year it was i just can't remember but they asked me if i wanted to come do some social media stuff because at that point i was already doing social media for the nation and i've just done it for the last 10 years i've i really enjoy it it's completely outside of the nation world it is just talking about food it is just making fun dumb memes about butter chicken and it gives me a laugh and and, and a couple of dollars and i i just i always have fun with it it's by no means my main gig but it is just a side hustle. I've also got another one where I manage social media for <clears throat> just, uh, I started a company probably in 2017, just like, you know, just a little side company where I manage lo social media for some local companies around the city. Most of the time it's people that they just either they don't know how to do the major platforms or they don't have the time to do the major platforms. Um, and I just kind of help them out. 
I, I don't maintain very many clients anymore because I have a lot going on with the nation these days, but I, I still do that because I enjoy it. I enjoy helping them out. I enjoy teaching people how to do some best practices on the different platforms and kind of teach them what I know about getting interaction on your brands. And I, I do that. <clears throat> I also do a lot of investing. Um, that is kind of a, another, I, I guess you don't, it's not really a side hustle. During 2020, when everything went to shit, I was doing some day trading and I did it somewhat successfully. I'm not, by no means did I make a bunch of money. That's not what I'm saying. But what I did do is I made enough money to kind of pay my bills. And that was a huge win for me at that time because I, I thought I was worried I was going to have to sell my house. I thought I was going to, how am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to pay the fucking heat? I lived by myself at the time and it was incredibly stressful. And I kind of took something that I love, which is reading about investing and turned that into a little side hustle. So I don't really do that too, too much anymore, but I still do dabble from time to time. If I got a little bit of time or just a little bit of, of kind of, I don't know, scratch the itch. I call it cowboy money, or I guess Jay calls it cowboy money, and I stole the term from him. It's it's by no means a way to get rich unless you really know what you're doing. I don't have a Bloomberg terminal at my house. If you don't know what a Bloomberg terminal is, essentially, that's what the big trading firms use, and the subscription is like, I'm going to make up a number, so it's probably wrong, but like 40 grand a year or some crazy shit like that. I don't have any of that. So I was trying to do it very bare bones, and really, ultimately, it just kind of turned into um, <clears throat> enough to pay the utilities, right? And then I also have opened drop shipping stores that have had varying levels of success. I've got YouTube pages that have had varying levels of success for monetization. So a lot of my interests are generally on the internet because that's where most of my skills are. Um, in terms of other side hustles, I've, I've always really wanted to do... Uh, what does Gary V call it? Where you go to like garage sales and buy mugs and then flip them. I've always wanted to do that just because it kind of seems fun and garage sales have always been fun to me, but I've never tried it. So those are kind of the side hustles. I've got other stuff that I've had going on with varying degrees of success or that I've varying degrees of effort, like an Etsy store. And I had a t-shirt printing company at one point. And I just, I'm a serial trier of different things. So I hope that answers the question. Feel free to ask me whatever you want. I'm always happy to uh, happy to answer those kind of questions. Okay, fuck it. One last voicemail. I have to mention it. I mentioned it to you in our ON meeting, but I uh, <laughs> I watched Rocky for the first time, at least the first three. <laughs> I have finished the first three fully. Uh, previously, I would always catch scenes while they were like on AMC or on TV, but I never really fully watched them. Incredible films. First two had me slightly in tears. They were emotional. The third was pretty. Great epic, movies. Won't lie. Gotta go finish the fourth one here. But my God, I, I can't believe I, I finally watched them. You know, at least I'm, you know, indulging myself in good films. And I also want to get to the Creed series eventually, which is a part of the Rocky universe. So, yeah, I'm trying to delve myself into some new movies here at Bag Milk. Why not, right? Yeah, I mean, expand your horizons, buddy. Have you seen Rambo? You're watching Sylvester Stallone. You're watching Rocky. Have you seen Rambo, Roz? Because Rambo, specifically the first two, fucking rule. Actually, you know what? The third one's all right. They get a little weird as they get older, and he's he's Rambo, and he's old, and he's in the jungle and in Burma. Burma is awesome. But, uh, Waz, I want to know if you've watched Rambo. Because if you haven't, I'm going to put those next up on your list. Got it? This one says Donkey Evan Bouchard Kiss. So I'm assuming it's Donkey Volley, but Evan Bouchard Kiss? Question mark? Yes, it's the donkey. By the way, good afternoon. And um, <laughs> it's been good. By the way, mm. Evan Bouchard mm. is an elite defenseman. Yes. I'm not having any fucking, any fucking uh, response to this. Evan Bouchard is elite. He is. So fuck you. <laughs> and let's kiss. Mm. Yes. Anyone, anyone wants to disagree with me? Oh, kiss my ankles. Good afternoon. Satan wants a kiss, donkey. If you're offering Satan's taken, I want a kiss. Now pucker up, big fella. 
All right, we got a handful of voicemails that we're still working through here. Uh, this one, again, is anonymous. Who it is could be anybody in the world. Let's go, Oilers. Okay, BM, I'm really glad you did a voicemail episode Thursday morning because the Oilers played pretty fucking good. Yes, they and did. Just even the series up. Let's go, baby. Yes, they did. I was a bit spicy in my last two voicemails. A little bit. Not bad. You know what? I'm feeling good now. I'm feeling good. You know how good I'm feeling? Tell I danced me. the wobble alone in my basement. Yeah, I fucking <laughs> did that. Now, do I dance the wobble like I'm a uh, quadriplegic? Yes. But you bet your ass I'm doing mind <laughs> dances to bring the Oilers some good juju. I thought the Oilers played pretty fun good. In the last my last voicemail, I think I ran it about uh, blue line play, and I don't I don't remember what else. Blue you know, line play apart, for sure. Apart from that first five minutes, played pretty freaking good. Yeah, man. And you played like that for a full sixty, and then another full sixty. Well, I'm I'm not gonna say where we're going, but we both know where we're going if we play like that for the next two games. Say it. Same. Then again, there's going to be some pushback from the stars, so the boys have to come out, and they have to play some fucking hockey. Mm-hmm. Play some fucking hockey like you did in Game Four. And when we play like that, we're unstoppable. Mm-hmm. We are unstoppable. I like positive Let's go, Nick. Baby. Let's go, Weathers. I like positive Nick. I'm glad I did a voicemail me- uh, voicemail episode as well. I thought I was going to do it this morning, but ultimately, life happens. What the fuck you want from me? Right. Anonymous voicemails continue. Who are you? Hello, Bag Milk. Was here voicemail number seven. Why are you Russian? Why are you Russian, Was? And I just have to mention to you something. I got a picture with Jason Smith at the Moss Pit. Yes, you did. And there were some kids near me, and they were saying, Who's Jason Smith? So Was told me that today at the office. He goes, do you know that there's a lot of young kids that don't know who Jason Smith is? And at first I got rattled. At first I got rattled, but then of course, 2006 was a long time ago when he was the captain of that team that went to the cup final. But if you're a young fan and you're listening to this, I encourage you to check out some of those old teams. I encourage you to explore what those were like because Gator, that was Jason Smith's nickname, was so fucking tough. He was hard as nails. And I would love, love to have a guy like that on this team right now. He was brutal to play against. Brutal. And last night when they showed him up on the big screen, he did one of the most gangster things I've seen from an oiler, an ex-oiler at the game in the playoffs. He wasn't wearing his Jason Smith jersey. And I thought, hmm, that's weird. They're always wearing their old jersey. What is he doing? And then what he did, he waved at the crowd, he took out a Sharpie, he signed the jersey, and he chucked it out where he was sitting into the crowd. It was fucking awesome. Love Jason Smith. And these kids are like 18, 20 year olds, and they're saying, Who's Jason Smith? Former Oilers captain, Gator. He was the captain of the 06 team. That 06 team is very dear to my heart. It's just like kids. Like, look up, read up on your Oilers history. Jason Smith, like, it just it I hurt my heart it. to hear that, man. And like, Jason Smith, hell of a defenseman, wish he was on our team. So I, I just had to vent about that, you know? It made me feel really old and almost as old as you. You know, it's <laughs> you just, it sucks, man. I, I think I know how you feel. I'm sorry for all the chirps. Good. But goddamn, kids these days, learn, learn to respect your Oilers legends. Good. I'm glad you feel old, Waz. Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Waz has been calling me old a lot over the last handful of weeks. And I love that the universe gave him a little dose of it because Waz is still in his 20s, albeit your late 20s, Waz. Your late 20s? Oh my God, Waz is so old. As you know, David Quadrelli, me, Big Dave, I'm only 23. I'm 23 years old, Waz, you old fuck. I'm glad the universe gave you a little dose of that, Waz, because that's what you've been doing to me. You've been making jokes about me having a sore back. You've been making jokes about all kinds of shit about me being old. And look what happened to you. Look what happened to you, Waz. Look what happened. Hi, Bag the Milk. Kate here. Hello. Listening to your Dallas podcast, I'm wondering if any of the Dallas fans told you or the boys to bless your heart. If they did, please look it up. 
It's not what you think it means. Wait, what did you say? I need to listen to that again. I missed something, clearly. Hi, Bag the Milk. Kate here. I'm listening to your Dallas podcast and wondering if any of the Dallas fans told you or the boys to bless your heart. If they did, please look it up. It's not what you think it means. I don't know what you're talking about. Now I'm more confused than ever. What did I say wrong? They were all very nice. Were they making fun of me to my face? Probably. That's fine with me. I felt that they were nice. And in the moment, I would rather live in ignorance. Kate, please uh, reach back out and tell me how I'm an idiot. I mean, there are various ways. Countless ways, even. Countless! Bag milk. I'd also like to add that I do believe the Oilers can win this series in seven. I've always believed they can win this in seven. Was wrote on the board at HQ that he thought the Stars were going to win. So if he's going to do a turnaround here in my voicemail, I'm not having any of it. Was Kennedy put you in jail for a reason on that whiteboard. She put you in jail because you said stars in six. So, uh, yeah, just going to put that out there. I believe in the oil. And for those that, you know, somewhat say, oh, you know, the series is done. The stars are going to win. <laughs> what, what are they talking about? Honestly, ne- never lose faith in the oil. Was. I'm on to you. He's just straight lying in your voicemail, man. You better ban him with a voicemail. He's been here talking shit this whole time, and now he's gonna pretend like he didn't put stars and six on the whiteboard at H and HQ. Come on, man. Okay, <laughs> tell me if I'm a dick for this. I think this is pretty funny. Um. So, anyways, every yeah, everybody's in a good mood right now. We mm-hmm. won last night, game yep. four. Um, people are honking to each other. That's got the flags out the window. There's fists going up. I love it. I'm just in a goofy mood. Seems like most people are in a good mood today. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just in the grocery store and I'm in the cereal aisle and there's some guy on his phone. He's on a speaker phone having a conversation with it's probably his mom. Um, and she said something because I was like right there and I could hear she said something like nobody cares about me. And the guy's like, well, I care about you. <laughs> and it just happened to be as I was walking by and I was just kind of like, I care about you, too. And he's like. Sir, do you mind? It's a private phone conversation. And I said, <laughs> relax, I'm just being goofy. And what I wish I would have said was, you're having a personal phone conversation on speakerphone in the cereal aisle. Like, calm down. Like, I'm being goofy. It's called levity. Um, anyways, if somebody did that to me, I'd be like, oh, you rascal, get out of here. I don't know. Anyway, uh, secondly, if something that I'm not going to name, but something undisclosed, really awesome happened in the next little while here, could we hypothetically not crowdsource, crowdfund a trip for Dukes to get down here to celebrate whatever cool thing may occur? I would chip 50 bucks on that. I think we could do it. How much would we have to crowdsource to get Dukes here? That's what I want to know. Dukes, what's that price total to get you back to Edmonton, buddy, if the thing happens? Well, we're again, job's not done. I'm not even talking about it. We got two more wins. We got to get to the stars before we even get a chance to do the thing. So today on Real Life, Tyler was doing our betting segment for my beloved friends at Bet365 and <clears throat> promo code oily bonus. Uh, he, he went a direction that made me insanely uncomfortable. And as the conversation was going on, I, I just I couldn't help it. He was looking at me. He goes, you hate this. And I go, absolutely i hate this job's not done or as kobe bryant said job's not finished job's not done just flows better you know that's why i say that anyway there you go there's the voicemail episode another hour of fresh content back-to-back days wrap it up The voicemail brought to you by nationgear.ca. Go get something decked onto your torso. Look as handsome as I do right now, or as beautiful as you can be, ladies. Now I'm confused with Kate. Apparently I was being made fun of to my face by Stars fans, but I'm too dumb to know why. Hmm. I wonder what that is. How long am I going to think about that? Hmm. Thank you guys so much for leaving the voicemails. I always appreciate you. These are fun to do because they're just random and I love taking your takes in. And ultimately, this podcast doesn't work without you. So I feel like you're as big a part of this as anybody is here. And uh, I'm just super, super happy. And after a win, it's kind of like, Welcome to the good life.
Okay. 